Hey everyone, it's Michael Dougal. I'm a residential real estate agent here in the greater Toronto area. And I'm really excited because during the first week of every month, we have the Market Watch update, which is a nice summary of all of the sales reported. And so during this video, I'm going to update you entirely on our residential market here in the greater Toronto area. We're going to discuss the average price, the days on market. As well, I'm going to answer some very commonly asked questions like what are my personal predictions for 2021? Is it a buyer's market or is it more of a seller's market? And which areas specifically in the greater Toronto area are somewhat undervalued? So you know, just in case you're short of time, in the YouTube description box, you'll see timestamps so you can refer to whichever part of the video may be relevant to you. And please do consider subscribing if you do get value out of this video. Here's the first chart that we're going to look at here. And what it does is it nicely summarizes the average price of the different style homes, looking at detached homes, semi-detached homes, townhouses, and condo apartments. So they've broken down the average sales price, and they've as well specified if these properties are in the 416 or the 905. So come to think of the 416 like the Toronto core, for most areas that's anywhere south of Steeles, and then the 905 area being the cities surrounding Toronto. So as we look at detached houses, here's what's very interesting is that they've experienced the most price growth over the past year, which is very different than what we've been accustomed to as throughout the past few years, it's really been the lower price points and the smaller style homes, which have been appreciating the most. However, not now, we're seeing there's a 15.2% increase in the average price. But here's what's neat, there's more of an increase that's being spread between the detached homes in the 905 area. We can see there was a 19.2% increase year over year with the average price detached home. The average price sale now being at $1,124,286. And then the 416, the detached homes have experienced an 8.7% annual appreciation with the average price being $1,477,000. And then as we look at the semi-detached homes, similar story as what the detached homes are is that they're experiencing more appreciation in the 905 area. There's a 16% increase with the average price now being at $816,000 in the 905 and then in Toronto in the 416, they've experienced an 8.8% increase in price over the past 12 months, now being at $1,160,000. And this figure averages across all sales being at 12.9% of an increase. Looking next at townhomes, they've appreciated by 14.9% in the 905 area and then a 7.3% appreciation in the 416, averaging out to 12.6% increase over the past 12 months, looking at the whole 416 and the 905. So this then makes it clear that for the higher priced properties being townhomes, semi-detached homes and detached homes, they're all experiencing more appreciation in the 905, but not the 416. So why is this happening and is COVID coming to play here? And the answer in my opinion is yes, COVID is definitely one of the reasons why the 905 has experienced more appreciation than the 416, because what's happening now, again, is December 8th, 2020. What so is Toronto has its lockdown in effect, meaning restaurants for the most part are closed, gyms are closed, a lot of offices are closed. But in the 905 region, most of the facilities are still open. As well, let's take into consideration the fact that the 416 encompasses the Toronto downtown core, which are a lot of tenant owned properties. And these income properties, these investment properties are often what are being undersold these days. Landlords are having bad issues with tenants. Maybe they're having trouble evicting them or maybe they're having a tough time filling in vacancies. And they're often selling them really just to cash out which is obviously going to affect the average sale price. Investors over the past five to 10 years have been more aggressively buying those properties, Toronto or downtown Toronto, because of the fact that they'd be close to schools, close to a lot of jobs and very easy to rent out. Whereas the 905 region, mostly newer properties, less properties being rented out or less properties even cash flowing. And furthermore, it's the fact that Toronto simply has a higher average sale price. And from my experience in working with some of the more high-end clients who are looking to buy over a million dollars, they seem to look at buying real estate more from an investor's perspective. And because the market is so volatile right now, prices may go up, prices may go down, depending on who you ask, likely a lot of these buyers are sitting on the sidelines. 
And then as we take a look at condo apartments, this is interesting and this is new news. There's actually been a decrease with the average sale price of condo apartments. And the reason I say this is new news is because yes, condo values are down. Everybody realizes that, but this is the first month where we've actually seen a decrease over the past 12 months. Whereas if we reference back to October, prices still had drop in comparison to pre-COVID times, yet there was still a 0.7% increase over the past 12 months prior to that. Although, like I mentioned, the condo average price did drop from pre-pandemic times up to September 2020, there was still a 6.6% increase in the average price within those specific 12 months. So this is the first time we've actually seen a decrease. There was a 3% decrease in the 416 and there was a 4.8% increase in the 905. The average price across all condos in the 416 and 905 ended up being $605,863. Let's now take a look at the year over year summary and looking at some other important figures like sales, new listings, active listings, um, everything seems up, which is good. There's all the signs of a healthy real estate market. What we're experiencing right now is still an upward surge of sales due to the fact that the pandemic kind of caused a little bit of a lag. Usually we see a spike of sales during uh, March, April, May, whereas that was all somewhat postponed. So we're seeing a much more busier November and then of course, even early December. As seen in this quote, home buyers continue to take advantage of very low borrowing costs in November, especially those looking to buy some form of a single family home. So the number of sales is up by 24.3%. The number of new listings is up by 33.5%. Active listings up by 15.4%. The average price, like I mentioned, is up by 13.3%. This is in total, including all areas and all home styles. And then the average days on market being down by 20%. And in most cases, the lower the number of days on market is, the better it is for sellers or the more advantageous it is to sell because you'd be selling your home very quickly, which is often a much less stressful process. And then if you further asked which areas is it most advantageous to sellers, or in other words, which areas are hot, looking at Milton, the average days on market is only 15 days. And then as well, both Brampton and Newmarket, the average home is only selling in 21 days. And take a look at that. They're actually selling above their asking price at 101% of their asking price, meaning that they're selling for 1% over asking. So let's say if a listing was up for $1 million, it would sell for $1,010,000. And then pretty much we're seeing everything in the Durham region is pretty hot. The average days on market is 19 days across all cities. Ajax only has 13 days on market. Specifically in Whitby, the average home is selling in 17 days at 104% of its asking price. And then if you were to ask which areas are slowest or where are there opportunities for investors, Here's the challenge with houses in general, like freehold properties, meaning detached, semi-detached homes, or maybe townhomes, those deals or those properties which are selling a little bit below market value are in the very high price range. So if we're looking at Toronto Central, for example, or maybe King City, in King City, the average home is selling in 67 days. And the central area of Toronto, where the average price is much higher, the average home is selling in 39 days. So this is a challenge because a lot of investors are wanting to get into the market for the first time. Maybe they're wanting to do a flip. Maybe they're looking to buy and hold, but they will need a lot of cash in order for them to take advantage unless they were willing to go ahead and invest in a condo market. So unfortunately over the years, it's been my experience that a lot of investors say, Michael, I'm looking to invest, but I don't want a condo. And perhaps those investors may need a little bit of a mindset shift and be a bit more open-minded at this particular time if they do want to take advantage. Because the condo market is where, again, we're really seeing opportunity. And to see, for example, that in some areas of Toronto, like Toronto Central CO3, which is a little bit south of Young and Eglinton, the average days on market is 38 days. This is really surprising. It has not been the case pre-pandemic and even a couple years prior to that. We've been exposed to a condo market where the average listing is selling in under two weeks and it's selling with multiple offers above its asking price. Whereas now, take a look at this, CO3, we're seeing the average sale being at 99% of its asking price. And then in Toronto, CO4, the average sale was at 95%. So I've talked about this phenomena in depth. I made another video on the Toronto prices for condos plummeting, but is it the right time to buy now? Do click this card here if you'd like to take a look at that video. And then if you're curious to know what my real estate predictions are for the end of 2020, as well as 2021, especially with this new news that there could be a vaccine, then I've covered that 
in this video, which I will link over here. And that's the way I'm gonna end everyone off is with an insertion of that specific video. I really hope you found this video helpful. If you did, then do consider subscribing or at least give the video a like as well. I'm looking for homes to sell. If you can think of anyone that's looking to buy or sell, then call me, call me, call me. My number is 416-671. 5218. And if you yourself are a real estate agent here in either Toronto or anywhere else in North America, and you're looking to make more money, make more sales, perhaps earn some passive income, then do call me, call me, call me as I've recently switched brokerages from Remax over to eXp, where I'm a partner and I'm helping to grow the company and I'm really helping explode the production of any agent that joins. So you're welcome to inquire about that. And I will look forward to seeing you all next time. Take care guys and stay safe. Bye. And why are some of these condo units taking so long to sell? Because if we look here, this D graph here shows the percentage of total sales within different